After six events, it's the Matt Fraser Show for the second consecutive year. 82 points ahead of Iona Koski in second, 100 points clear. Third place, Ricky Garrard with our quick test remaining today. That's a quick test and it got even quicker, especially after what Sanchez just did. That 40 cal bike, 20 foot banger. It's power and some technique at the end. It hurts and those in charge know it. For more on that, we go to Sam Farber. In second place, Yona Koski. And in lane number seven, your overall leader and a fan. It's all part of the reason why CrossFit Games General Manager Justin Berg says that CrossFit Games are the ultimate test of fitness. On a day like today, it's not enough just to be strong or versatile or quick. You have to be adaptable if you're going to be named the fittest on earth. Here in heat number three, we'll have a full field of 14 in this one, and there are some heavy, heavy hitters, not just including that man, the points leader, Matt Fraser, but in this one, a lot of people that have actually done this event in the past, including Scott Panchik, who finished seventh in the 2012 double banger. Ben Smith was 10th in the similar event in 2012. As we take a look at our lane assignment, Smith will be in lane number three. Panchik will be in lane number one. But somebody that you want to keep an eye on here will be in lane number 13, one of the strongest men in the field, Alex Anderson. Well, it's just a, it's a tough dude on that bike, but what Ben Smith needs to do is he needs to take advantage of this event having experience because he's sitting all the way down. And, you know, one guy I think to also look for is Ricky Garrard. I'm gonna say it early so I don't look like I'm trying to make up for later. This is a guy that is not afraid of anyone on the field when it comes in a salt bike and just some pure grunt work at the end. At 20, the assault bike, nobody is gonna catch that pace here in heat number three, but I'm already seeing some hands go up. Alex Anderson will be the first one off the assault bike at 33 seconds. Patrick Vellner right in line with them. Vellner in the yellow shorts on lane number four. Anderson in the bright yellow shirt in lane 13. Third place was Cody Mooney in the blue and yellow in lane 14. Chasing down the time of George Sanchez. One minute, 48.63 seconds, and an ultra tough time to beat at that. I like what Vellner's doing. Look how far forward he is on the banger. A good horizontal strike. Brett Fakowski just to his left, super technical, not known for really being super aggressive with movements like this. Noah Olsen off camera in lane number 10 has taken the lead on this portion despite not really having the best technique. We've talked about positioning compared to where you are on the block, but he is just shoving that thing down the 20 foot track. 15 seconds until the time to beat of a minute, 48 seconds. In six events thus far this weekend, we've had six different winners. And Noah Olsen is trying to be the seventh, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. George Sanchez in heat number two is gonna take the event win. Where is our heat winner gonna come from? It looks to be Noah Olsen, second fastest time thus far is Travis Mayer, a minute 58.22 seconds. That will stand as well, but Noah Olsen will take the heat and he'll take third place in the event at two minutes and four seconds. And one of the last guys off the bike who I thought would be the first is Ricky Garrard, who's he's sitting in lane number six above Fakowski and Vellner, who are well ahead of him in the middle of the field. But once he got to this banger, he's picking up where his other brethren left off. This guy is crushing this banger. But it wasn't enough to catch Brent Fakowski, who will take second in the heat, fourth in the event. <laughs> he just dumps the sledgehammer into the crowd. Ricky Garrard will beat out Pat Patrick Vellner because Vellner forgot to bring the sledgehammer with him. Ben Smith will finish. Jason Smith quietly finishing fourth, passing Vellner as well. And Matt Fraser, unfamiliar position for him. There's been 21 events since the start of the games one year ago. There's only been one time he hasn't finished in the top 10. It was the deadlift ladder which you can't really help much. Matt Fraser, for the second time in 22 events since the start of the, the games last year, will finish outside of the top 10. Two athletes left. 
And it'll be Janikowski on the near side of the screen and Logan Collins who will be our next finisher in 13th place. I'm actually absolutely shocked at the athlete that finished 12th and that being Alex Anderson. And Janikowski, Matt Fraser's closest rival in terms of points with second in points position, 82 points back. And Matt Fraser, despite not having a strong finish, 20th in the event, will pull away from Koski. And Koski was hanging tight on top of the leaderboard the entire time. And sometimes you just run into a wall or a block in this portion. And that, you know, there's a lot of power involved. There's a lot of skill involved and just the willingness to suffer and focus. You got to really be paying attention to how you're swinging, how you're striking. You can see the grit playing a big factor in fatigue in this as well. How about this? Jason Smith giving a little motivation to his Meridian comp the compatriot. And Ionikowski, a couple of events today that just don't go his way. He's not the largest athlete, not the strongest athlete. And he'll bring up the rear of the field here in heat number three at four minutes, 39.77 seconds. Good for 33rd place in the event. But that man won't be an event win. He'll finish third in the event. But your heat three winner is Noah Olsen. Guys just screaming off the bike. Vellner was the first one off. Alex Anderson was just behind him at the top part of the screen. And I like the intensity that Vellner had and the more so the positioning. He wasn't messing around too much. Olsen sitting a little bit far back, but in that position, you know, you get a little bit of a hit, you get a little bit of a pull. I think it's too far back, but if you can take an advantage of that sliding. And Fraser, and I wasn't sure if it's the hand position that might have been in the issue on the banger, but he didn't look super comfortable with that towards the end.